If you're writing any kind of software that needs to talk to a Kubernetes cluster and you're using Go, there's a very strong chance that you're going to wind up using Client Go. Right, Client Go is the official Go client for Kubernetes and it's built and maintained by SIG API Machinery. Uh, it has a bunch of stuff built into it, including uh, the HTTP client you need to talk to the cluster, uh, grabbing a user's cube config. Uh, and so today we're just gonna jump in to build a quick getting started app uh, to show you how to uh, kick it off. So if you come to the GitHub readme for client go, you can scroll on down. There's some good documentation in here and how to use it and how to get it. The first thing that I like to do is to uh, look at the releases on the side here and you gotta pick probably the, the latest stable version. Um, there's differences in, in backwards compatibility, but you're, you're generally safe grabbing probably the, the latest stable version depending on what clusters you wanna talk to. So we're gonna use uh, 120.2 here. And so let's just hop right into an empty directory. And I'll start by initializing a new Go module. So go mod init, hello client go. And we're gonna open up that go.mod. And I'm just gonna toss in here a couple require statements. So the first one we want is the Kubernetes IO slash client go. And we want that at version 20.2. And I'm also gonna grab two other libraries while we're here that we're gonna need in a bit. They just have some different types. So let's use uh, uh, the API library and then the API machinery library. And I'll explain what those are when we get to it. Uh, and that's it, we've got our imports declared. Let's do a go mod download, make sure those are cached. Now we can open up our main.go file and start with a brand new package. So we'll start with package main, we'll start with func main, uh, and the first thing you need to do is you need to grab uh, what we call loading rules. Now there's a million different ways to get started with client go. There's a million different ways to grab a cube config, a cube config and do some authentication. Uh, the easiest that I found is to grab this uh, set of default loading rules. And these are just rules that you can uh, do some overrides for, but it's simple things like looking up in a user's home directory for the uh, .cube you know, config file. Uh, and so we're gonna use a, a subset of the client go library called client command. This is under the, the tools path here. And this will just make it pretty simple for us to, to work with these, um, these loaders and other bits. So the first thing we do is we grab that default loading rules. This one right here, Need new default client config loading rules. Be very ready for some verbose function names. Uh, and so that gave us a set of loading rules. And from that, we can actually grab the user's cube config. Now, I should caveat that there's different ways to authenticate whether you're inside of your Kubernetes cluster or outside. So maybe this is running in a controller or some other application. Uh, there's different mechanisms to grab an authentication token. So we're gonna be writing this from the outside perspective. And so we'll grab cube config and we will assign that here uh, we grab our client command and we grab the new default uh, deferred, yes, new non-interactive deferred loading client config. This will take in our rule set and it will also take in a set of overrides that we can specify here. And so now we have the user's cube config and so this actually has a bunch of different bits on here. Like you can grab the raw config if you want, and this will actually print out pretty much the, the string of the raw config that the, you know, it's grabbing. Uh, what we can do from that is we can actually pull out the config object that we want to work with, and we'll get an error back. And here we can actually say, cube config, please give me the client config. And so let's check if we have an error here. Uh, I'm just gonna panic. You should obviously handle your errors a little better. And now from that, I can actually grab my uh, Kubernetes client or client set as we usually call it, which is a, a group of clients. So I can say client set equals Kubernetes. And this is also coming from the client go library. And I want the new for config or die. So I can pass this my config and it will panic if there's an error. There's also an option where you can have this return an error. 
And just like that, we have a full client that we can work with. Uh, so I figured the, the best way to get started is to uh, query for all of our nodes that are in our cluster and we can print out the names. So let's do that. Let's say we get back a node list and an error from our client set. And we can grab the core v1 interface here. Uh, core v1 is where all of your basic uh, resources live, like your nodes, your pods. Um, deployments live under apps. So there's understanding of the different uh, groups and versions and kinds inside of Kubernetes is a bit tricky at first as well. Uh, but we're just going to be working with that core API here. And so I'm going to grab the nodes. And I also want to list them. And we need to plug in a context here. Uh, we'll just use context background now, but you should obviously toss in a timeout and some other control mechanism. Uh, and then we also have to give it the this list options here. Uh, we can specify a couple other bits like watches and maybe some filtering, uh, but we're just gonna grab the straight list. Uh, and I'm gonna rename this v1 that was automatically imported. Uh, we usually wanna call this meta v1. And you'll see this used throughout the Kubernetes code base. Um, there's a lot of packages that end in v1, so you'll eventually have to start naming them different things. So we'll name this one meta v1. So we get back that node list and that error. So we should check that error and we'll panic. There's an error. And then we can loop through our node list and print out those node names. So let's say for node in the range of node list dot items. And let's just do a format dot print line for node dot uh, name. There we go. Uh, and just like that, this should make our first uh, Kubernetes API request. So let's run that. I'm using a uh, an uh, Amazon EKS cluster that I have configured here. Uh, you could use just about any you know mini cube uh, kind, whatever you're working with to, to develop. So let's run go run main go, and we should see the two nodes that I have in my cluster being printed out. Boom, there they are, right in US West 2. Very cool. Super straightforward and easy. Uh, the next thing let's do, let's just uh, deploy a quick pod directly to the cluster. And so for that, we're gonna need another import. So we'll say, uh, we'll call this new pod. It's gonna be a pointer to a core v1 dot pod struct. And we also need to import that. So let's say, We'll call this, we'll call this core v1. And this lives under the API uh, library that we also imported earlier, core v1. Cool. Uh, and in here, we need to plug in a bunch of uh, things like our, our meta object and our spec. Uh, basically, everything that you would write in your YAML file, you would define here in Go. Uh, something you notice is I'm using the autocomplete heavily. Make sure you have that configured. Um, it helps a ton for figuring out these method names and these structs. So we need to start with that object meta. We'll plug in the meta v1 object meta struct here. And I'm just going to define the name to be, we'll call this test pod. Uh, and you could do something like the labels here. You can just give it a map of strings if you wanted to label it, just like you would in YAML. Uh, and then we can define the spec, which is the core v1 pod spec. And I'm gonna just define the containers list. So we have a list of containers and I'm going to name the first one. We'll just call this busy box. Got to give it an image. We'll give it busy box latest. And then we'll give it a command to run. So we'll give it uh, sleep and big number here. So we'll sleep for that long. So now we have our pointer to our new pod object. Uh, and we just need to use our client set to create that. So we'll get back a, a pod and an error from our client set, grab core v1, we'll grab the pods. And so we need to give it a namespace that we're working in here. Uh, you could grab the current namespace from the cube config if you'd like. Uh, I'm just gonna toss in default. And then we can create a pod, 
give it a context. And we have to give it our new pod. And then it wants the create options. Uh, and that's it. We just check the error. So if error, panic with the error. Otherwise, let's print out that new pod. And that's it. So let's, let's see, we'll do a cube control get pods. We shouldn't have any running right now. Okay, we'll go run main.go. We see that we have our two nodes still printed out. Uh, and here is that pod object with everything we defined. So here's our busy box, containers, uh, everything is in there. So we could, we could work with this however we'd like. And just to confirm, let's do get pods again. And boom, there's our test pod, right? So very straightforward, very simple. Um, it, it seems like a lot to get started with. And it is, understanding these libraries can be pretty confusing. Um, you just kind of learn the conventions after some time. But yeah, so that's getting started with Client Go. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see anything else or have me uh, dive in and build something. So cheers.